So if you're anything like me, um, I tend to learn software and get to know the software and I have an exponential kind of learning curve. I go into it, dive into it until I feel a bit familiar with it. And then my learning curve seems to kind of slow down dramatically. I think it's just maybe a, a lazy facet. Uh, I say creative people can't focus for too long, but be it as it may, I find that I start to learn things only when I have a client's job that requires more knowledge than what I have at the moment. So if the client's work I'm getting kind of fits into the scope of what I'm already doing, then I pretty much don't dig too much into it. So this is my situation now at the moment. Now I'm going to just take this. I go control C and I made the paste to a new uh, from new clipboard. So a new item from a from the clipboard. I've got control C and I made it a shortcut in. OK, so that's how I'm jumping into a new tab there. I find that's kind of helpful for myself. So if I'm working, for example, on a design like this, I got used to taking the artboard that I'm working on, going to File, Export, and then choosing the format and sizing it accordingly and exporting it. So that's been the way. And then if I have a second artboard, so how do you do a second artboard? Um, I usually would go and click the, the actual title there. So if you click on there, keep Alt down and you can drag out a second artboard and I press shift just to constrain it so it's nicely aligned just for cleanliness purposes. Uh, if you go and you want to insert another artboard you can do so. Um, I'm not covering how to create artboards at this point. Just the fact that if I export this one now it's labeled the same but if I go and I go and export um, you see it's going to pull up here both our tabs so this is just going to help me to decide which one is which. Um, so it's best to name these so that when you export you know which one you're grabbing or which one you're on at the moment. So say I call this tab 2 and this is a good habit if you are going to use the export persona which I'm roughly going to be covering now. That's the purpose of this video. I would get to, if I'm going to send these two out, literally go there, go and export that one come here export this one and that kept me happy but I got a client now that needed a lot of different variations they had a like a registration mark here which was different sizes and closer to the letter not close to the letter they needed to check out all the options and I landed up with a quite a few artboards now what some people would do is they work if I just grab this artboard here and I'm going to size it if, if you grab the title of the artboard and you're sizing the artboard but if you kind of grab the whole lot here um, you're most likely going to get hold of that. Sometimes when you want to size just the artboard the artwork also resizes then you just click off it and click there. But say I had a situation like this and I had another object on it. When I export here now I'm going to export this entire artboard if I use this export uh, feature over here. If I want to export this component and that component independently then that's pretty much where the export persona gives you that flexibility. But for my purposes uh, I'm going to design or this is how I'm thinking I design all my variations on separate artboards. I just find it works best for me. So if I have to send out a particular design I don't put more than one on the artboard for the purpose of this particular client. Okay, But if you had to do this and you wanted to send them separately, the export persona allows you to cut them up in slices. So you, you can indicate a slice for this and a slice for this area on the same artboard. Okay, But that's for another video. Mine now is about exporting individual artboards on their own. So here's where it came. So this was the client. Okay, So I did different things which is used for their website, used for the developer to build into their app and everything. So they wanted a whole sort of different options. So yeah, I'm sitting with I think 20 or 22 different ones. How do I export it going singly? And then I decided, okay, stop being lazy and go have a look at the export persona. I watched a video or two a while back 
but I wasn't in the mood. It was a Sunday afternoon. I wasn't going to go and sit and watch videos now. So I just experimented a bit, and I'll just share what my little high-level discovery is. So I went to export persona. Um, these menu items here, uh, not these menus, but these tabs are usually on the right-hand side. But as you've noticed already here, uh, I, in the design area, I put my significant tabs here and a few of the other things here just for my better workflow. So I'm going to click Export Persona and I've moved the export options, slices and layers over on the left here. So when I look at slices now, because slices is what it's going to import. It's going to import a particular slice. At this stage, it's saying background, which means everything that's in your document, not on a specific artboard, is seen as part of the background. So if you want to just quickly export all of these, just like it is, you can click this little button here and it will do an export. But if you look at my cursor, you can see that it's got something quite unique here. It's literally it's the slicing tool so if i come to this tab and i go to the top and i left mouse button click and i do this you can see it's created a slice and there it puts a slice there for me okay but now must you go around and do it with everyone absolutely not there's always shortcut keys and affinity design is always ahead of the curve so i'm going to go control z to remove it um, what we do is if we want to make each one of these odd boards uh, into a slice. Here again, when I created all these, I literally worked on single artboards. You, you could make each layer and everything on their own. I'm not going to be discussing that now, but for the purpose of changing every single artboard into a slice, um, I'll go here to layers, and there we see the layers that we have available. Okay, same layer palette as we have under the uh, designer persona. So what I'll do here is I'll select the first one and keep shift down to select because I want to export each one of them. Now I've selected every one of them. Here at the bottom you'll see there's a thing that says create slice. Okay, so if I click there, look what happens on this side. Boom. See it sliced every single item. If I go back to slices now, I see those are all the slices that I have. And you see it's not selected the background. I can go and select the background as one of my options to export. But that's a quick way of getting all your items sliced. And these slices happen, of course, in the export persona. Now, the other thing is you can go build up batch structures, etc., which I'm not touching on because I'm not too knowledgeable about it. So I'm going to go to export options. And here's where you determine which type of files you want to export. So I know that you can choose, say, these two to be PNG, the next three to be PDFs, etc. You can set that up. It's very powerful. So I want to remove this cursor and I'm going to just select the selection tool over there. So all of them are in slices now. And as per usual, we have a whole lot of presets that you can arrange. But I'm going to do this now. I could do it in PNG and do all the settings there or i could choose it as jpeg tiff whichever option that i have i'm going to just go with png for now and i'm going to make all of them export as png then i'll go back to slices now i must make sure that i have a check box next to the ones that i want to export okay the other thing is also if you want to deselect stuff um, i'm going to just click every if you want to deselect this one and you don't want to export it make sure the check mark is off there or check it on if you want to do all of them uncheck um, and there must be a shortcut key for that but i just select this one press shift go to all of them and then click in the tabs and you can switch on and off okay but i'll leave it on there for a moment so all the check marks is what's going to be exported and i've chosen it to be as pngs so how do we export it again we drop down here and it shows us 22 items okay it's 22 items going to be exported to this specific dimension in png or if i selected pdf it would have done that and given me the options to set it so i'm going to go export it's asking me where do i want to put it i'm going to just put it in a pictures folder and call this youtube must have created so many YouTube uh, folders already for this purpose and then deleted them. So here we're going to go, boom, click once, 
boom that's it all of these are done already let's go to that thing again we're going to go to pictures let's see where are we are youtube there we are and if you double click on that it will probably open up on my other screen uh, let me just bring it across this way um, bring it here so there we have it okay and the reason why it's black of course it's because it's got a transparent background so all of those are exported out there and that's just one click so if you find yourself having to do lots of different variations and permutations of uh, logos and things you want to export if you into UX UI you often would do a lot of variations use the export persona it's brilliant in getting things out fast um, you could export them in multiple formats the same file choose multiple formats and so forth there are one or two great videos on the export persona go and watch them I haven't done them uh, but watch them and they'll help you with in-depth but for this kind of level uh, I'm sure this should be able to help you okay so yeah that's it for my little insights into the export persona um, just the other thing is if which is standard exports for PDFs if you are going to be exporting say this entire library of stuff as a PNG when you do it to PDF you often want to convert your items to curves okay this one is currently as you can see my label says skill works logo converted to curves um, you convert them to curves because if you send a PDF to somebody and they don't have the font specifically with fonts like this you might have it all coming out incorrect on their side uh, however you do have the ability to embed the fonts as long as you've got whatever license is required embed the fonts in your PDF when you send it also um, that's part of the export persona um, what I do and this is maybe just off topic here for a second but I have snapshots which you can access if you go to view under studio it's one of these there's snapshots I have it enabled and I have it docked here so these snapshots are to give you a how your document is at that point in time so like here for example I've created one that I haven't yet converted to curves okay you will see this here each of these are now independent curves so I made a snapshot of when they converted to curves which is what we're seeing here now but if I wanted to go back and go access the things before I converted them to curves um, all I do is I go back to where I created a snapshot come here and restore that snapshot if I do maybe I should just do one first because uh, I don't know if I modified anything as at this stage to create a snapshot of what exactly is happening here you go to the camera add snapshot and I press tab just to hop in there immediately um, I'll just call this YouTube demo so that I know I've got it current here because between when I converted to curves I might have made some alterations um, but now if I go back to where I created this previous snapshot Okay, let me show you here. here if I double click, that is a, a, the letters converted to curves. If I come in and I restore this not yet converted to curves, if I go there and say restore it, okay, if I come back here now and I double click, can you see we're still in text mode now? If I go to YouTube, I say restore that, come back in here. Uh, if I double click on here now, oops, there we're back to curves mode. And that's just a side note about snapshots so if you have things that you send out in PNGs just create a snapshot before you convert them all into uh, curves to send out if you want to do that and then create another snapshot so you can flip between the two just knowing that if you the, the latest one that you created if you do a modification on there again um, you know you 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 can't go right back and see those modifications done it's literally giving you a snapshot of that in moment in time um, even if you go with the history button here yeah, if I go with the history button and I go right out of wherever I was with the history button and I go back to YouTube demo and I restore that it will bring me right back to that place here so it's kind of independent from the history it 
gives you a real-time snapshot of your document as at the time. Hopefully that helps. Sorry for that little off-the-track moment, but I think it will help. Have a fantastic day and God bless.